Hello, I'm Jill at ingvid.com and today's lesson is not really a lesson because we're doing something a little bit different. We're having an interview with someone I know who has come to the UK from another country and is living and working here. So I'd like to introduce Camila and uh, we're going to um, ask her some questions about her experience of uh, coming to the UK and uh, living here. So let's get started. So C Camilla, thank you for coming. It's thank lovely to see me. you. You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. And so uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, how you came to uh, decide to come to the UK? Uh, yes, so my name is Kamila. I come from Poland, so my first language is Polish. Uh, before I arrived in the UK, I have lived in Warsaw for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so I worked there for a bank for over seven years in corporate banking as product manager. Mm -hmm. And here in London, I work for a fintech startup. I'm a credit analyst of small companies. Uh -huh. I really like my job. I enjoy it. There is a lot of going on there. My company is still developing. So also I also have opportunities to develop in uh, diverse areas. Okay. So yeah, I'm really uh, happy to be part of it. Oh, that's good. So lovely. So the fintech that means financial and technology, finance and technology. Yes, exactly. Used together yes, for exactly. for um, financial for yeah, funding. Because, yeah, exactly. Because we lend money for small companies, but making our credit decisions, we use a lot of technology. Oh. We use some algorithms and so on okay. so that's why fintech <laughs> okay lovely so so have you always spoken english when when did you first start to learn english in your life <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so i learned english in high school and during my studies uh, and also after i finished my education i attended some english lessons in poland mm -hmm. while i was working there and so um I felt that I understood quite a lot, but mm -hmm. I had a fear of speaking oh. because I think that, uh, in my opinion, teachers put a lot of pressure on grammar, which yes. is good, of course, but there is then because of that, there is uh, a little time for practicing speaking. Mm. So a lot of people fear uh, of speaking. Yes. They don't feel confident enough to speak. Mm. Yeah, mm. and that that was also my case. Yes, <laughs> I, I think I I experienced the same when I was at school. Um, it, it was a lot of it was based on written and reading and writing. Yes, exactly. And exams, writing exams and yeah. tests. Yes, exactly. So so and so since then, uh, do you feel that you was it when you came to the UK that you started um, getting more practice uh, at speaking? Yes, exactly. So. I feel that uh, since I arrived here in the UK, my English language skills have improved. I feel more confident. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I decided that first couple months I would work uh, on my English. Right. So I read uh, lots of newspapers. Mm -hmm. I watched some TV programs. I watched some TV series with subtitles. Mm. And I also attended uh, private English lessons with great teacher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What also <laughs> helped me not only to improve my spoken English, but also to it gave me some insight into English culture mm. and politics sometimes and everyday life and things to see in London. So I really enjoyed that and I would recommend it to everyone who yes. uh, th uh, is thinking about mm -hmm. uh, moving to mm -hmm. UK, for mm -hmm. example. Yes, I, I remember we we had we've had a lot of very interesting <laughs> conversations about English politics yeah, and okay. about the culture and uh, different types of food yeah, and yeah. all of that. Yes, exactly. So, so did you ever come to the UK for a holiday before you came to live here? Uh, yes. So it's funny story because. 
Uh, the first school trip abroad I took part in was to London. Oh. I was 11 years old, oh. <laughs> but I can still uh, recall some memories from this trip. For example, my first um, impression was that there were um, lots of people walking uh, along the pavement, so it was really crowdy. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I saw a lot of people very um, smart dressed, mm -hmm. and it was a really big surprise for me because then I lived in small city, so you know that smart clothes were uh, designed for some special occasions oh. like wedding or something. Oh. And here I saw a lot of people uh, so smart, and elegant, dressed up. Yes, so, yes, yeah, Be being fun. the capital city. Yeah. And and the, the where you come from, you're not from Warsaw originally. Yes, I don't exactly. Think. So a smaller place. Yes, exactly. Some... So that's why the difference was so huge for me. Yes. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Oh. So I also still have some photos and souvenirs from that trip at my parents' home. I but they are still, I think, available to buy here, and uh, they are quite popular, like this um, tin of candies in shape of red public telephone oh, or something. Yes, the, so. the red phone box, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, phone box, with exactly. sweets inside. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I, I still have it. <laughs> oh wow! Amazing. <laughs> From that, that trip. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. They're very popular souvenirs in in the gift shops. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this was my first time in London. Oh, wow! <laughs> and so when you came. To London at the age of eleven, did, mm -hmm. did you hear people talking, and did you understand what people were saying? No, much? I don't think so. I didn't understand no. <laughs> a lot. No. <laughs> so maybe at, at, at eleven, had you already started studying? No, no, I didn't English because uh, at first I uh, learned German, ah. and then I started English. So right, and mm -hmm. I think. Between German and English, there are some similarities in, in vocabulary. There are similar words, so yes, the German are. probably helps. Yes, exactly. It's easier when you uh, learn uh, one language than to mm. learn another. Yes, I think. yes, that's right. Yeah. It, it's sort of it's good for the brain, isn't yeah, it, exactly. to to learn languages? The most difficult part is to start. I think. Yes. <laughs> then it's easier. Yes, that's right, and it's a very gradual building process. Isn't yeah. it with yeah. language, just yes, building exactly. vocabulary, understanding grammar, yeah. all of that, and then speaking, <laughs> and then speaking. <laughs> That's right. So, so when um, when you um, when you came to the UK to live, mm -hmm. what what were your first impressions when you first came and and found, you know settled in and. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I wouldn't say it was a shock, but my first impression was that uh, London is like a melting pot of different cultures and mm. languages and nationalities. Mm. So I think it's that London is so diverse that it's not very hard to uh, feel uh, here like home. Right. So people are very nice and friendly and welcoming for foreigners. Yes. And so. My husband and I are also a mem members of FOCUS. This is um, an, an organization made by expats for expats. Uh -huh. And one of the first events we took part in was a presentation about Brits. Oh. And uh, <laughs> they recommended also uh, one book entitled Watching the English. Ooh. So I also read <laughs> that book and it helped me to understand English culture uh -huh. and it helped me to avoid shock. <laughs> yes. So Brits is a, a sort of short word for the British, the British people, yeah, exactly. Brits, which is a sort of slightly jokey yeah, um, exactly. name for people who are from uh, from Britain, yeah. so Brits, yeah. br watching the Brits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but to be honest, I have to admit that at first it was difficult because it was hard for me to understand what exactly people were saying. Mm. Sometimes they were uh, talking too fast for me. Yes. And I had this problem that when I uh, didn't understand single word in a sentence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the whole sentence. Oh, so, yes. yeah. But then I started to watch the, some programs yes. and to read lots of newspapers and it started to improve. Yes. Oh, that's good. Because I think watching the television with some Subtitles on it is helps. a very good idea. Yeah, exactly. Um, I I do that too because mm -hmm. I don't always hear what 
someone has just said. Yes, exactly. And sometimes you get some quite comic subtitles, they're not quite right. Yeah. And maybe the, <laughs> it's a computer or something and the computer has misheard what the person said and it's something completely different, yeah. especially on the live news programmes. Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, it's a very good way of uh, hearing the, the words and seeing them yes, written exactly. at, at more or less the same time, yeah, isn't yeah. it? I think, I think that it helped me a lot. Yes. For example, I like BBC News because the speakers there are, um, they, they speak very carefully, so mm. it's easy to understand mm. them. I think it's a good way to start. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So in London, of course, as you say, the, there's a very wide uh, diversity of people mm -hmm with all of them from different backgrounds, different countries. So when you hear people speaking, they will all have different accents. Yes, Even if they're speaking English, they yes, will be exactly. speaking English in lots of different accents. Yes, exactly. So did you find sometimes that, that someone's accent was, was not very, you know, it was more difficult to understand mm -hmm. them? Um... I think that Italian people have quite strong accent. Oh yes. The, uh, I met. I have already met a lot of them, and they are quite good in English. But yes. they still, they uh, even if they have lived here for many many years, mm. I think they have still very strong accents. Yes. Yes. I think also that it's easy to recognize Polish people <laughs> because oh. our accent is quite strong also. Oh. But uh, I think that very. Mm, different is also uh, accent of Indian people. Yes, they are really good in English, but yes. again, the the accent I think it's quite strong. Yes, yes, yes. So, so London is, as you say, a melting pot, really. Yeah, exactly. So, and and what about just the general culture? Things like the weather, the food. Um, mm, what? So. Um, for me, I, I was quite surprised because I uh, expected more rain, <laughs> oh. but <laughs> it hasn't been raining so far a lot. So I have this impression that uh, last year it was raining more in Poland than in London. Ah. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. So uh, it's funny because uh, when we uh, resigned from our job in, in Warsaw, my husband got as a gift an umbrella. Ah, I've heard of other people from Poland being given an umbrella as yes, a gift like, before they yeah. came to the UK yes, exactly. as a joke. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. Yeah, everybody, uh, when people think of London, they uh, think of rain and fog and so on, but it's not so so bad. No. The weather is quite nice. So you, you think that the, the rainfall level in London London is lower actually than it is in Poland. Uh, yes, <laughs> definitely last year it was uh, lower, but oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so weather is not uh, so bad. No, but I'm sure that umbrella has come in useful though. Yes, it's yes. Been well used probably yeah, by yeah. now. Yeah, we have used it a couple times, but not so many, yeah, so yes. I'm happy. <laughs> that's good, that's good. And, and what about food? Is there any difference uh, between mm. food in Poland and, and the food here? So I think that here is the big variety of um, food available. For mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. in uh, big shops, there's a lot of food because there's a lot of people from other countries. To, yes. So they are looking to buy something they know from their countries. Yes. So yes, the especially parts with vegetables and fruits, for example, mm -hmm. are very huge. And you can buy the uh, different uh, vegetables from China, India and so on. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really interesting. And it's also uh, very nice that you can go to different restaurants here f with different cuisine. Mm -hmm. I like very um, Indian food, for example. Yes. So there is also a lot of Indian restaurants yes. here in London. Yes. So, yeah. so do you have a favorite one? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit that. 
<laughs> oh no, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But yeah, my husband and I, we have our favorite Indian restaurant. Yes. Uh, it is called Dishum. It's, uh, yeah, the ambien ambience there is really nice, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the food is really good and the service is very patient and friendly. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. And uh, what about, um, I think, what are you veg am i right you're vegetarian but yes. your husband isn't yes so. yes i am but there are a big variety of food there so everybody will find something yes food uh, like a meat or some f seafood or something yes oh that's it's really nice that sounds great <laughs> that's lovely so um is, is there anything um about in the English language or the culture that you you still find difficult is that do you still feel you're struggling with anything mm -hmm. in my opinion quite difficult are uh, phrasal verbs yes <laughs> because it's not easy to remember all of them with their meaning no there <laughs> like are so for example, many yeah get in get on get out get off get yes. together <laughs> get through <laughs> get round yeah exactly so <laughs> yes. maybe it would be easier to have uh, separate words for yes the, their meanings yes but yeah i i think it's quite difficult but also um, interesting but sometimes confusing can be to use some sayings because for example they have the the same meaning but uh, you have to use different words to yes. to um, make them uh, like for example um, like two piece in a pot translating oh. it directly from polish into english it would be like two drops of water oh, so I it's see. different so, so i think it can uh, enrich your language spoken yes. language yes. but yeah you have to be careful <laughs> yes so sometimes uh, an idiom in one language yeah. it, it may directly translate yes, other times yes, it's a different a different image yes exactly so instead of drops of water <laughs> uh peas peas in a in a pod yeah exactly so okay mm -hmm. oh that's interesting yes so yes and phrasal verbs of course there are hundreds and whenever you put a different preposition with the verb it, it changes the meaning and even some phrasal verbs can have two completely different meanings the same phrasal verb yes exactly um like to um to overlook to overlook mm -hmm. um, is either to not to notice something mm -hmm. or to supervise something. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's completely the opposite, you yeah, know. So exactly. it's weird. <laughs> so that's English, you know. <laughs> so so what uh, what sort of advice would you give someone who someone who may be watching, who's who's in another country, and they're they're learning English through Ingvid, and they're working really hard, and they're thinking maybe of coming to the UK. To, to live and work or study, uh, is there any sort of advice that mm. that you'd give them? Uh, I would say go for it, <laughs> okay. take uh, take your chance. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, yeah, I think that um, living in a country where people uh, talk this language every day and you have the opportunity to use this language on everyday basis, it's the greatest way of learning it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you. Uh, learn but it's you know by the way you learn something every day yes. watching tv or talking with people just talking with people so yes. it's really it's easier to learn when you live there and so yeah i think at the beginning especially it could be difficult if you are not very um, perfect in mm. english mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's very good idea because after a while uh, you will start to see improvement and yes. you will get satisfaction yes. out of it and yeah I think it's a great idea. Okay so just go for it and come and absorb the language and you, you don't even notice yeah, perhaps exactly. sometimes that you're improving but you are because yes, it's exactly. so gradual. Yes exactly. So, okay well thank you very much Camila that's been really interesting thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, we uh, wish you all the best with your 
uh, ongoing stay here and, and your life here and your work and everything. So thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>